Hey guys, Drew here. Welcome back to Ohio Ag Videos, and it's going to be a much different video than what I usually do. This is actually a video for school that I'm making about soil conservation, and basically what I'm going to go through is the soil conservation methods that we do here on our farm in eastern Ohio, and maybe take a look over at our neighbor's farm and see the conservation methods that they are doing as well. So I'm going to cover as much as I can here, not doing all the conservation methods out there just because we don't have like the means to do so. And yeah, so that's what the video is going to be. It's a school project. So if, if I'm like being like really weird about this, it's because it's not actually like for an official YouTube video. This is a school project. So yeah, uh, keep that in mind. So here we are, right behind the barn here, uh, towards one of our uh, main fields, actually most photogenic field that we have. Um, and this conservation method I'm going to be covering in this field specifically is actually two of them in one. It's cover crops here and also it's our crop rotation system. So this whole field is actually in soybeans just this past fall and uh, now it's like November and it's really freaking cold. And so this is our winter wheat. Uh, we also have it here as a cover crop because what this will do is it'll grow all winter or go into hibernation in the winter. And basically what the purpose of this is, is just here to keep the ground in place and hold everything down. So then in the winter, if it gets windy or if there's any kind of rain or big washouts that could happen, this will hold everything in place, kind of like trees inside of a hill. So, that's what the cover crops do, as well as the crop rotation. It keeps different things in the ground, puts nutrients back into the ground, or takes excess nutrients out of the ground. In this case, soybeans leave a lot of nitrogen in the ground. So this takes the nitrogen out of the ground with not only being a cover crop, but it's also our winter wheat crop. So pretty interesting thing we have going on here. So it, it's pretty much both, co it's co both cover crops and crop rotation in one field here. So. Neighbors do crop rotation over there, that soybean field right there, and um, this spring that'll be planted to corn and so on and so on. So it'll be corn, soybeans, corn, soybeans, corn, soybeans. So that's the main conservation method that we have a lot here on our farm. Um, it's mainly crop rotation and cover crops. So I'm gonna go over here to our soybean field and I'll go more in depth with the crop rotation. Okay guys, here we are right at the field, right across from the field that we were in, just across the street here. Um, this is our double crop soybean field. Now, for those of you that don't know what double crops is, because I mean we're watching this in school right now, so probably half of you don't know what double crops even are. Um, so this, this fall, or this summer, this was all in winter wheat here. So we harvested all the winter wheat, and then took the straw off and the wheat. And so we've got straw bales, which are in there, so we can get a whole bunch of money off of straw bales. So that's got nothing to do with conservation. What does have to do with conservation is these soybeans here. What these do is you get not only that extra crop, but you also for the remaining half of the year, you get a crop in the ground holding everything in place, keeping all the nutrients from just washing away. It basically takes everything and holds it here in these soybeans. We can make a profit off of those later. So these are almost ready. They're not going to be ready for a while, actually, until probably about Thanksgiving. But yeah, so that's what these that's what double crops do. Now, in the spring, so these are all going to get harvested this fall. Probably not going to yield much, but they're going to get harvested this fall anyway. Now, what's going to happen is crop might get into a cover crop, might not be cover crop. It's a little late for that now. But what's going to happen is this. What's, we're gonna have some crop rotation going on. So this spring, we're gonna plant corn into here. That corn is gonna take any excess nutrients that these soybeans leave behind. It's gonna hold everything in place and just keep something in the soil and have a different crop in the soil so you're not putting the same thing in over and over and over again. So yeah, that's the another example of our crop rotation that we have going on here. All right, so we're at another uh, spot that is very, very actually crucial to this conservation thing I've been talking about the past 10 minutes um, this right here actually I mean it doesn't look like much because I mean there's winter wheat there and there but right through here this is actually just a grass strip going through here all the way down to that little yellow thing you probably can't see now I mean it just looks like a grass strip I mean that's pretty much pretty much all that it is and this is why we have it here standing water here isn't rushing down which rushing down is very bad you see when that water rushes down here what's going to do is it's going to take all this soil and it's going to carve a rut probably about two feet deep 
I know because it happened in that grass strip right there, which is why that's a grass strip now and not soybeans. So what happened is over there, there was a rut. It got rained really hard last year. There was a rut about a foot, foot or two deep. It just washed all the topsoil, just washed in a big pile. God, that was a huge mess and bad, really bad for soil. It takes all the nutrients off the soil. This makes it bad. And that's why you have these grass strips here because it holds the water in place. And the, not only does it hold the water in place, it forces the water, it slows down the water so then it doesn't go through here and just rip everything out, which cannot emphasize enough, ripping out the soil is bad. Plants need the soil. So, no soil, no plants. Simple as that. So that's what goes on here. Now, it's gonna be hard to get to the spot I'd like to talk about because it just rained. And I mean, that's why there's standing water here because it just rained. And you can see, no ruts, it works. Now, right there, the little yellow thing sticking out of the ground. What that is is a tile line. They're tile lines throughout this whole field. You can kind of put this in water conservation, but I'm including it in soil conservation because it works as both. Now, I'm going to talk about this while I'm walking back. Now, what these tile lines do is they take this water and it forces the water, or it doesn't really force the water, but instead of the water running over the topsoil and ripping everything off the topsoil, which I've already said is not very good, instead of all that topsoil just getting ripped away and making a huge mess, What's happening is that that gives that water a chance to go through the soil, keep all the nutrients in the soil where they belong, and that and that water can just go and go through under go under the tile lines and on its merry way to wherever the tile lines go, which is usually a creek. Actually, it is a creek. And then, I mean, I'm not gonna cover water conservation too much here, but when it, once when it does that. It also filters out any nutrients that were in the water, so then it doesn't get, it doesn't pollute the water or anything else. So, I mean, soil conservation and water conservation, they go hand in hand with this. So, yeah, that's always good to know. So, um, those are the main conservation methods that go on on our farm. Probably gonna go over to another farm. I mean, pretty much everyone through here, I mean, this is Ohio, Eastern Ohio more specifically. Everyone through here does crop rotation. One person that doesn't do that, but pretty much everyone through here does crop rotation, and almost everyone through here does cover crops in some way, shape, or form. So, those are the methods that work here in our farm. Those are the methods that have been proven to work also on other farms, and throughout the country, the, the, this method is used widespread. So, yeah. Um, that's been your soil conservation lesson brought to you by Drew. And I'm gonna let the teacher continue teaching whatever he was gonna teach today. So, thanks for watching.